Hello there and welcome back. This is Nigel Quinnin, VP of Development at LumenVox. Um, this is the second installment of my seven piece series describing how to install U Asterisk 13, UniMRCP, and LumenVox 13.1. In the previous installment, we uh, went through the, the overall process and we installed um, PJSIP. So in this uh, installment, we are going to be installing the asterisk 13 application itself. Again, a lot of these notes that I'm going to be showing you uh, and uh, going through are based on an article um, by Justin Hester, um, which I again encourage you to read. Uh, a lot of detail in there, and um, if you run into any issues along the way, uh, this can be very helpful. So, what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be installing and building from source. Um, the reason we're going to be doing it from source as opposed to using uh, an installed version is because we found that uh, when building from source, the building the asterisk and the uni MRCP together um, seems to be less problematic than trying to use the installed versions. If there are mild incompatibilities between the two, you can run into uh, all kinds of problems. Um, so we're building from source to try and avoid that. Um, there's really less of an issue when trying to connect to the, the LumenVox end of things because we communicate using MRCP. So it's, it's less concerned with which modules and such are involved. So really, we're trying to build compatibility here between asterisk and the UniMRCP interface. Um, just while I'm talking about UniMRCP, there, there's a lot of confusion going around about why use UniMRCP and what it is um, compared to some of the older ways of doing things. Uh, in the past, in, the, in you know two or three or four years ago, um, there was a thing called the asterisk um, connector bridge, which was used. Um, and this was uh, found to be very problematic. It was, it was problematic trying to keep the thing versioned correctly and run into all kinds of problems. So LumenVox no longer supports that connector bridge from the Digium folks. Um, and basically they, they basically um, didn't want to be supporting that anymore. Um, so the UniMRCP interface is really the way to go. So I know there's a lot of confusion out there about what um, to use for connectivity between asterisk and the LumenVox speech system. So the way to go these days is UniMRCP. And again, following these directions, hopefully we'll keep you right and uh, we'll get you up and running. So again, we're building from source and uh, there's a lot to it, but following the, the examples here should be reasonably straightforward. Uh, we're also gonna be building a very simple dial plan um, as part of asterisk um, to, um, to run some tests. So we're initially going to be doing a very simple test, and uh, later on, once we have ASR and TTS up and running, we'll do some more complex tests. Um, as part of the asterisk 13 install, we're also going to be making a test call into the asterisk. Um, that is before we've actually started doing anything with UniMRCP or LumenBox, just to verify that we have the asterisk itself installed correctly, and also verify that the connect the connectivity with the uh, PJ SIP is all set up um, the way that we want it. So we'll be using, I'll be using my X Lite um, phone. It's a SIP phone, soft phone. Uh, you can use whatever is most convenient for you. And then once we've finished installing Astros 13, then we'll move on to the UniMRCP dependencies. Okay, so we are back at the, uh, the console window here. Um, again, this was a fresh um, sent OS 64-bit installation instance that we set up in the previous session. So the only things we have on here so far are a few dependencies that we installed and the PJ SIP library. So what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to move to the user source uh, directory, um, which is where we put the PJ uh, project, uh, PJ SIP um, library and did our building the last time, uh, but this time we're going to be doing the uh, the asterisk. So I'm going to go ahead and download the asterisk package. It's going to take a few seconds, and then we are going to go ahead and uh, unzip it. 
then I'm going to uh, change directory into the, the asterisk uh, folder that we need to do the building in. I'm going to run some uh, configuration of uh, the system uh, so that it knows how we want to build um, the, the asterisk specifically for our needs. Again, some of these details I'm kind of skipping through because they're on, um, they're on the blog um, that's available. And it will also be in the, the written notes that accompany these videos. So you get a nice uh, asterisk text art there once everything is installed. Um, so everything looks good so far. Uh, now the next thing we want to do is um, do a make with menu select. So this will take a few seconds here just to run through and it's configuring um, how we are actually going to be doing the building uh, of asterisk. So as you can see this fancy screen here, we're going to be going down to the resource modules on the left and then move over to the right list. And we're going to be moving down to the PJ SIP entries. So as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of PJ SIP entries. And the thing we're looking for is to the left of each entry, we want to make sure that there is an asterisk shown. So this is good news. This is a good sign for us. Um, a whole bunch of asterisks next to all of these um, PJ SIP modules. So these are in good shape. What you don't want to see are any X's next to these PJ SIP modules. If you see X's, then something's gone wrong. Uh, you probably want to backtrack, do a make dist clean. Uh, again, consult the, the blog for notes on, on what all that means. Um, but this here is what you want to look for, and we are good to go ahead and proceed. So I'm uh, happy so far. Go ahead and do a make and a make install to build asterisk. Okay, great. So that succeeded uh, building. Uh, as you can see, there's all uh, good news up above here. And through the magic of television, I saved you the five minutes or so that it took to do that build. Uh, so the next thing we're going to be doing after a successful build here is going to head and do make samples. Uh, obviously, if you had encountered any issues there, typically you can look at the errors as they're reported, and it, uh, it generally tells you what the problem is. It's it's often um, on you know a missing dependency or something like that. So you you would have to uh, go ahead and add those dependencies and then start over the process. So um, we're going to be doing make config here if you want to start asterisk uh, whenever the system reboots. So that's reasonably straightforward. So now that we've built asterisk successfully, we'll go ahead and start it. So asterisk is running now. And we'll just go ahead and open the console. And as you see here, everything looks great, uh, no errors. And it shows that we're currently running um, asterisk. So happy days. I'm going to go ahead and quit out of the asterisk console for now. And then we're going to be going ahead and um, doing some uh, sample dial plans. Actually, before I do that, um, I'm going to uh, edit the etc hosts file. So editing the etc hosts file, what we want to do is add the IP address of the physical machine that you're working with. Uh, in, in my case, this is, um, let's see, 172.18.2.109. Uh, again, yours will be, almost certainly be different than this. And you need to give the, the, the name of the machine so that it knows how to find itself. So this is just a symbol. Um, bookkeeping task that you need to do. It's always best to have that in place. Um, the next thing we're going to be doing is editing the PJ SIP configuration file that's in this location. And we're going to be uncommenting a few lines here. So the transport uh, UDP line. And we're also going to be further down the file and looking at the 6001 sections. There's actually three of them right next to each other here. So we're going to be uncommenting some of those, changing the context here to public, 
and making one or two other changes. So basically just uncommoning a bunch of these, um, these parameters. Here we're setting the password to password. I recommend you do not do this in a production environment. Choose something sensible. Um, but for the purposes of our demo here, we're saying that's to password. If I'm going a little bit too quick in some of these uh, examples, don't worry too much because I'm going to give you um, stripped down versions of the uh, the extensions.conf and the pjsip.conf files that will be in our documentation that accompany these videos. So you'll be able to use those as example files and drop those into place as needed. So we're going to go ahead and save that file. And the next thing we want to do is edit the asterisk extensions.conf file. So we're going to be setting up the, the dial plan, uh, the very simple dial plan scripts that we want to be running. So we'll go ahead and edit that file. And as you can see, we're in the public section here. I'm going to make a few small changes. So made a couple of those changes. Um, removed the uh, example uh, demo that was here. Added extensions uh, 100, 101, 102, 103 for four different tests that we have going. So for now, we're just going to be testing the asterisk and PJ SIP configuration that works along with our SIP phone. Um, that will be the Hello World sample that we're running. Once we have the um, UniMRCP and LumenVox ASRTTS all set up, uh, we can run some of these other tests. Um, but for now, we're just putting them all in here, then we'll use them later on. So again, just the examples that I have shown here are what we need. And this will be part of the, uh, the samples that I give you with the documentation that accompanies the video. So again, you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what I'm typing from the video, hopefully. So go ahead and save that. Now we need to uh, restart uh, asterisk. So we're going to do a core restart now. That didn't work. And that's because I did not have uh, asterisk running. So service asterisk start. Okay, starting asterisk. And now we'll open the asterisk uh, terminal. Again, since I've just <laughs> started asterisk, there's no real need to restart it, but um, core restart now. I think for you guys, you had uh, asterisk running at this point. So go ahead and restart. And the next step in the process is to configure our SIP phone. Again, I'm using an XLite SIP phone for uh, convenience. Uh, you can use whichever SIP phone you like, uh, whichever one you are comfortable with. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and edit the settings um, that tell it how to connect to the asterisk machine. So we're going to use the uh, username uh, 6001, which was in our PJ SIP configuration. The password here is password, and the domain is the IP address of the asterisk machine, which in my case is 172.18. To 109. Again, yours will more than likely be different. Uh, you can choose to register with the domain or not. Anyway, so assuming that all went to plan, we're going to run the application, the test application, which is hello world, that should be at extension 100. Hello world. Perfect. Hopefully you heard that. It said hello world. Uh, what we can do this time is uh, run the asterisk console again. So again, we see everything running correctly here. With the with this amount of verbosity, we should see a bunch of um, debug information that appears in this console window whenever a call is received. So let's just go ahead and dial 100 again. Hello world. So again, you can see that it ran the hello world application, and that shows us that everything is working uh, perfectly. Great, so we're all set up. We have PJ SIP installed, we have Asterisk running, and we have our SIP phone that can connect to Asterisk and run a simple application. So we've got everything needed to run Asterisk up and running. 
The next step is to move on and install some of the UniMRCP dependencies. And um, I'll meet you in the next video. Thank you for watching.